Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Oh, happy Wednesday everyone! And as you can see, we are dressed and ready for Christmas and we are so excited that you're here. Thank you for being here. Today we have a carding party and we're going to make some really fun fiber art bats. We're gonna be showing off some fantastic new drum carters that I know you're gonna be very excited about. They are made in the USA. I've had mine for a long, long time and I absolutely love it. We're gonna make this art bat together and look at a few more things. So I'm so glad you're here and look forward to sharing this with you. And thanks for being here. Say hi over in the chat. That's where everything's happening. If you're new, say I'm new. If it's your first live show, say it's your first live show. Our friends will welcome you. I wanna say hi to a few folks. Hi to Amber Bull. Hi to Lisa, all the way up in Canada. Linda Reader, you're always here. Sharon Berger, nice to see you also. Uh, Kathleen Dodge to Haven, all the way up from the Pacific Northwest. Thank you for showing up. Uh, Brenda Hodges as well. This is a bunch of usual suspects. Thanks for being here, y'all. Uh, hi to Cindy Powers, Chloe in New York. Hi to Carrie, all the way in the UK. We hope that today's show is fun and I look forward to sharing this fibery goodness with you. So if you participate in the live chat, you get a chance to enter to win. And today we're gonna to be giving away some hand carded art bats. So lots of goodness to share. Uh, what else do I wanna tell you? If you're watching the replay, then comment down below because you also get a chance to win. And on that note, I have two prizes to give away from our show last time with the lovely Charity Vandermeer as our guest. Our winners are Tina Parman and Brenda Bennett. Congratulations, y'all. You win a wet felting activity pack. And if you're not in our database, I know you are for sure, Tina, just go to our homepage and click contact us and tell us you are a winner for today. So the fairies are here as well as always to share some goodness with you. And the first up are the magical fairy Alyssa and fairy Jamie. Hello! Hi! Today we're showing you our specialty designer big bundles. This one is called Peppermint Swirl. And this one's going to be dashing through the snow. They're both going to be fine fibers with merino top, merino silk blends, and lots of luster fibers. And they are also on sale right now. Yay! Up next is Fairy Angela. <laughs> Hello everyone. So this is another one of the specialty designer big bundles, uh, but this one is an eclectic mix of uh, medium to fine fibers. So put that there. So this one comes with some like MC1, New Zealand Coriadale, Merino top, and then luster fibers. So you get a mixture of everything that looks like a Christmas tree. <laughs> All right, and up next is Marie. <laughs> Also with us today is the very funny fairy in the field, Fairy Kayla. Woo woo! Hey everybody! Happy Wooly Wednesday! <laughs> I hope you're having a great day, a great week, great month. I hope it's all great. <laughs> Just wanted to pop in real quick and share some funniness with you. So, what kind of key can't open doors? What kind of key can't open doors? A turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you have a great time felting, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Kayla. Thanks, y'all, for putting up with our antics. As always, pretty much we just have a house full of kooks around here, and that's the way we like it. So thanks for hanging out with us. We appreciate you being here. Today, we're going to be carding these art bats, and they're really so fun. What I love about art bats is you can felt with them. Sometimes you just get a color theme, uh, inspiration. They make a great uh, like top design layer for your felting. You could piece a whole bunch together and make a tablecloth or make a scarf or use them like even if you're felting a purse or something and use this as your top design layer. Spinners love to spin art yarns with them and man, they're just so much fun. They're great gifts for fiber artists as well. Lots of um, 
treats you can have and ways to put them together. So we are going to be carding an art bat together today. This is made with merino top and other luster fibers. We're going to be working on this drum carter right here, which is the Little Tom Motorized. This little guy is a smaller version of the drum carter that I've used here for a lot of years. So we're very excited to announce our partnership between Living Felt and She and I Designs, which some of you may know are the makers of the Fancy Kitty carding tools. They make drum carters, they make blending palettes and other things. And today we're gonna to be working on two drum carters and I'll show you a few of the things that we have here. One of the things I like about them is they're made in the USA. They're ready to go and available to ship. Uh, yeah, and they're really nice tools. So let's just jump right in and make an art bat together. So y'all chime into the uh, chat. Jordan is here with me in the studio and she's gonna be sharing with me your comments and your questions. And let's just have some fun. Mm -hmm. So what do you got there, Jordan? I was just saying, woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this first drum carter is a, a motorized drum carter. It's called the Little Tom. Uh, the Little Tom, and I'll tell you about the different drum carters in a moment, but just real quickly on this motorized version, it has a single motor that drives the large drum, and that it is going to also affect the little drum, which is the liquor in. So if y'all haven't seen this before, I'm just turn it, I don't know if they can see. So there's a small little drum in here, and I have a little feed plate where we're going to be feeding the fibers in. So for this drum carter, you're mostly going to be looking at the back, but I'm going to be feeding in the fibers right in here to this tray and this is where we're going to make our art bat. Yep, okay. Because we're working with commercially processed fibers, the fibers are really close together. So one of the things I like to do to start is we're going to just separate the fibers a little bit. Now I have a whole bunch of fibers over here all prepped and ready to go, but let me show you what I mean by that. So this is our fine 19.5 micron merino top. That's what I'm working with for the base of this bat or the wool portion of this bat. And all I want to do is separate the fibers a little bit. Bit. So I'm just going to put my hand and hold a weight and then back the fibers up a little bit. I just want to get them a little further apart before I feed them in and then I want to stretch them out. We're going to be initially feeding fibers right into the feed tray, but we just want to prevent them from clumping up too much and as they go onto the drum. So this is how we're going to start feeding it in. And this is, if I say just break up the fibers or separate them a little bit, this is what we mean. Just make them a little bit thinner. Okay? Now, to make this bat, uh, the, the first one that I'm making with you, we are going to start by, I'm going to go ahead and stripe the drum a little bit, get a little bit of colors laid down here. And I like to turn this all the way to slow. I've, I've turned it on and there's, this has both a forward and a reverse. So you can have the drum going in either direction. The reverse really helps you take it off and the forward gets it moving. So once it's clicked on, then we can control the speed right here. And I'll just go, oh, I, you can go, that's as fast as it goes. And this is, we're not turning down the volume at all. This is how quiet the machine is right here. Very nice and quiet, okay. So now I'm going to start by just painting uh, a little bit of some stripes right onto the drum of the machine. Just to put some color down before we add our weight. I love this motorized version. I love having a motorized version at all because then you can just design right on the bat, right on the drum, whatever it is you wanna make. So we're just gonna put a couple of stripes down there and now I'm gonna start feeding my white, so how can I show that? I'm gonna start feeding my white right into the feed tray and we don't have an overhead on from where we are right here. I wish we did, there we go. You can kinda of see it's going in and then you can see it starting to fill up on the drum. The drum. 
Okay, now I have more, so there you go. Now watch this, I'm gonna add a little bit more white. I'm gonna add some white right into the feed plate. And in a moment, maybe we could move it too, perhaps, so people could see. Um, I'm just feeding it right in on the little tray here, and the machine is doing all of the work for me. And when you make an art bat like this, you can stripe it as you go along if you want, or you could keep all of that on top. But what I do is just take little tiny pieces and let the drum carter just grab onto it. I think this bat would make a really sweet uh, table runner. Something, because the colors are just so wintry and cool. And I'm not putting, right now, I'm not putting any of my luster fibers on the bat, but you could. So if you're a spinner, I suppose, let me switch to that for a second. If you're a spinner, if you're a felt maker, you may not want all of your silks and fibers in the bat, or they could be. And you can card a bat even once or twice. So for especially if you're a spinner, you probably want those fibers, all the luster fibers and the bling fibers all throughout the bat. If you're a felt maker and you're only wanting to use this for your top dressing, then you may not want them buried in the middle. But we're gonna paint this together and I will just let those fibers go throughout. So what are we thinking about these colors so far? Ooh, I'm not sure about the colors. Let's see, I think a lot of people are amazed how large they are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this this drum is an 8-inch drum. I'm going to add some white uh, viscose right here. This is an 8-inch drum. The width is a true 8-inch, and that's just the teeth width are, is 8-inch. And it will make a bat that is up to 38 inches long. So that's like end-to-end, -end, um, 35, 38 inches long. So it's really beautiful, it's really nice, and you're going to get a lot out of what you put into it. I'm going to feed in some more white so we can build up this base. You can also build a pretty big bat here. It holds a lot of fiber. Let's see it coming there on the drum. Jamie says, yummy, it looks like a blueberry slurpee. <laughs> on the drum, maybe we can see what's happening. Yeah, there we go. Now I've gotten sloppy because I'm looking at the I'm looking at the TV here, but let me I'll just show you this real quick. So my fibers are coming off my let me get around here. I'm coming off the the edge a little bit here. Not really ideal. I don't want them spilling off. But the nice thing about this is you can just turn it off and then you can just put it right back on top. So no problem. I'm going to keep painting this little guy and you can always speed it down as well. I like that you can just take these little thin, thin, narrow strips and make it really, really long. Let's get some luster. The same colors, you can layer the same colors of luster fibers as you have merino or you can use those as a little bit of a contrast. Yeah. Okay, so what will be the typical use of such bats? So Audrey, these can be used for wet felting. Absolutely. You can just you can wet felt with these bats and use them as your surface design layer. So you know you can of course you can always on your surface design layer lay out the fibers by hand, but you could also just make art bats and chain them together if you want to make something long, like I mentioned, like a table runner or something like that. So this would be really this more like your surface design layer colors. I'm going to get this last bit of wool on here. We're making approximately a two ounce bat. And this little burnishing brush helps us, like you can call it, I've also, also called it a packing brush, a blending brush. Really, it just helps get the fibers laying down into the bed of the machine. And I'm not putting much pressure. I'm just barely just touching it so that it packs it down because you have the depth of the teeth that you can work with here. Now, let's add some other fun fibers. I brought some Angelina. This is our Midnight Angelina. A lot of people in chat are excited for the sparkles. Uh -huh. Sparkle is so fun. 
Okay, let's add some white Angelina as well. Now, sometimes I like to put the Angelina in and then make sure I put something else on top so that it's not just sitting right on top, so that something, a thin layer of something else can go on top of it or over it. We also have some neps here, wool neps, and I'll sprinkle these on. You can also slow down the drum as you go. It doesn't have to go so fast. And I just put the little neps on. Sometimes they get clumpy, but it doesn't matter. You can brush them off or whatever. And let's put a little more. This is like, you can hold two colors at one time. About how many ounces of fiber does it hold? You know, I haven't pushed it, uh, Tina, and that's a great question. What I've noticed is that when I use fine fibers like this, I can get more on the drum than if I'm using a loftier fibers or fibers with a lot of crimp still in them, like our MC1 bats, um, then it's going to hold less. So it's really going to depend on the bulk of the fibers that you're putting in, and you can fit more fibers it feels like when they're fine fibers and they're really close together yeah so i'm going to add a little bit more to this it's such a pretty pretty colors together we're using um white of course tide pool and fur and i think evergreen is the um luster fiber color that we're using and um, let me see. You can also use something like sari silk waste or um, yarns and such. The only thing to know is that they are, if they're clumpy, they're going to kind of go on clumpy. So separate the fibers as much as you need to. If they're long, then they're going to want to go on long. So you can always cut fibers as well. Let's go in with just a little more shock of the turquoise in a couple of places, and then we'll take this guy off. How many speeds, Kim Pope asks. So the speed is not, I mean, there's a bunch of little knobs over here. I can show, I mean, there's a bunch of little dots over here. I can show you, but it's not like a click. It's a very smooth dial here. So there's a bunch of little dots here, but it's not like they click. So it is very gradual and it's a beautiful, very smooth, really nice, you know, feeling dial, but it's not click. So, you know, it doesn't go, it doesn't go so fast that you can't uh, control it or keep hold of it. Yep. There you go. Okay. Let's look at this maybe from a different angle. We're going to bring this over here and why don't we show them, um, whoopsie, we're hung up here. Let's see if we can look at this overhead so y'all can kind of see the feed tray as things are going in. That's a nice, that's a nice angle. And so this right here is where I'm feeding things in. The power supply has a, has a quick, like a quick disconnect, which is really nice. And then right here is where I've been feeding in the fibers on the tray. And what we want to do is when we remove the bat, is we're going to break the bat right here along this little gold line. This is where we take it off. What do you think, Jordan? Take it off? I think we're ready to take it okay. off. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. Here I come, y'all. Okay, <laughs> Jordan's got us all set up. All right, here. So this is where, this little gold bar right here is where we break the bat to take it off. And you have this little, and some people call it a doffer hook, a bat pick, whatever. It's just this little handled hook. And we want to break the bat right here. And I made a very thin bat. You could definitely go th thicker. And I'll show you a thicker one in a minute which was actually not as thick as it could be. It could be even thicker. We just want to break the bat, and this is like barely a bat, really, because we made it 
so thin and so quickly. And you can use a large burnishing brush. You could use a large burnishing brush or a small one. I didn't bring my uh, bring my poles over here to take it off. Oh, they're on the floor. Use a brush and clean up. Joan Frazier asks, could you just cut the bat? Why would you cut it? If you cut it, you won't you need to get it off the teeth. So you can't cut it because it's all embedded in the teeth. Mm -hmm. The teeth, yeah, the teeth are all holding on to this fiber. Um, which gives you that beautiful blend, but you if you cut it you're not going to be able to get it off and you can't run the scissors through these teeth We have little tools that help us like if your fiber sticking We have these little picks that we can pick the the fibers out of the teeth But you wouldn't be able to get something as big as a pair of scissors through there As I mentioned this one is very very thin I would say it's like a quarter of as thick as we could have gone, probably. Everyone's surprised how quickly that went. <laughs> yeah. That. Yeah, you know, if you're making it thicker, it's going to take a little more time, but it's also more fun. It's like Jordan and I have been making art bats here, and she knows you could just sit here and just play and play and play, and the time that whittled the whole afternoon away just making, just making bats. It's really fun. People sell art bats at fiber fairs. We're all kind of junkies for them. Really fun, fun process. Um, this same machine comes in a manual version. This is the electric version. And we'll look at the manual, um, a manual version together as well. I'm just trying to get this all clean. It's worthwhile to get it clean, unless you're just gonna reuse it for the same, but you wanna get as much of your fiber off the off the drum as possible. And we always wanna put them away clean as well. So I'll go back over here, show this to you. Where are we right now, right here? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll come over and show it. Okay, maybe I'll move the, I'll move the beast back. <laughs> <laughs> This is little Tom, so there is a bigger there is a bigger one, which I'll show you in just a second. And here is here is this ghostly, beautiful little bat we made together. Come here and move my move all my stuff. Let's see if I can open her up. So it's so long that it doesn't even fit on the table. Really pretty and beautiful. And as I mentioned, this one is, is very, very, very thin. Here's a thicker version of the same bat with a little more green. Um, this one is shorter. I made it on a different drum carter, but I added a lot more richness of the blues and greens on the top over and over again. So you can make it a little more dense if you want, you can paint as much deliciousness as you want on there. And I even have another one that I can show you. So let me bring that one. Where is he? Uh, my Oh, I took them out, the ocean ones. Um, I took out the, the ocean one, but I do want to show that one in a minute. So this is an example of one that's just a little more dense and was a little more short, and then I barely striped the inside. They're both um, eight inches wide, but the little Tom makes a much longer bat. Um, we have another one here I wanna show you. Thank you, Jordan, for getting that. Okay, so this is the ocean bat. And I made this one on the little Tom also, right? Mm -hmm. uh, no, this one's short. I, I don't know which one I made this on, because look how short he is. Um, I don't know which one, I, which one I made that on. He's really short. Let's see. Here's one that I made on, on the Little Tom. Another really thin one. 
this one was like a midnight ocean one and it's really long it's 38 uh, another like 38 inch long bat so where are we I don't know where I'm we are sorry here we go so this is an example of that one now like I said these are ghostly thin the ones that I'm showing you here designed really as like that surface design layer on top of something but you can even card them again and get them more blended if you want you can just break this up and feed it right back into the feeding tray and get um, and get your blends get them more blended but this one was made as a stripey a stripey bat so that I can have that variegation all the way through. This one is folded in half, I think. So what do we think, Jordan? They love the colors. They're reminding him of nice ocean greens and a wonderful day at the beach kind of thing. Um, let's see. Yeah, so Judy's asking, is there any applications for an art bat uh, for, for needle felting? And Judy, the uh, fibers I'm showing you today are fine fibers. So if you use fine fibers in your needle felting, then you certainly could. But you could also use these drum carters for medium to more coarse fibers, like our MC1 batting, the Bergshaft batting, the Maori batting as well. So the reason that I wanted to share these drum carters with you, the reason we wanted to partner with um, She and I Designs or Fancy Kitty is because I've had a Fancy Kitty drum carter for uh, going on, I think 10 years now or more than 10 years, and I love it so much. So let me introduce you to the big Tom. This is little Tom, he's motorized. There's also a non-motorized or a manual version. We'll look at a manual drum carter by Fancy Kitty here in just a second. This one, the, the difference between the one I will show you and this one is the Little Tom manual. The hand crank and the base is so high that the hand crank allows you to just hand crank it in the middle of the table. You don't have to have it to the end of a table. But the drum carter I've had for a really long time is called the Big Tom. And he's really, really fun. So I'll bring him in. Okay, so Big Tom, I'll show you is, the first thing is that Big Tom is um, wide. It's the, the base is like 17, I think it's 17 inches wide is the drum. And it's also motorized, the Big Tom's motorized, but it has two motors. So these drum carters have a ratio. This little drum, uh, let me see if I can show you. This little drum, yeah, this little drum and this drum, they spin together on a particular ratio. When you're doing fine and medium fine fibers, you want it to be on a one to four ratio. This one's not plugged in. I can show you on a, another one in a minute. But if you have something like the Big Tom, you can change the ratio just by changing the dials here because both the liquor in or the small drum and the large drum or the swift they are each independently powered so if you want to switch from fine to coarse fibers the big tom allows you to switch now this drum carter not only cards fine fibers but i've also used it to make every single um, fairy tale pumpkin art bat, which we haven't made in a while, <laughs> but the fairy tale pumpkin art bats that we have sold over the years, which is just a ton of fiber. And for those of you who know, maybe post in the chat, the fairy tale pumpkin art bat was um, is made with our MC1 fibers and some decadence fibers or luster fibers as well. And this is the machine that I made those on. So it's electric, it's powered. And when I made those loftier fibers, those, uh, let's see, bats from those fibers that have a lot more crimp and a lot more loft in them, the bats would be, I would stop at about three ounce bats. So it took me a long time to make production bats on this in that regard. But for self-use, just so fun and such a dream. Even the Little Tom, I find, is very, even though it's eight inches wide as opposed to the when this one is double, it's so fun because it just makes bats so fast. So you don't, you only have the one motor, but it's on that four to one ratio, which is perfect. And it, that means that the fibers, the rate that the fibers feed onto the big drum, that's what controls that. So, yeah, so this is, this is Big Tom. But they also have manual ones. So what questions do I need? So what is the count on your carding cloth? Do you suggest for fine or medium fiber? Thank you, Jan. Thanks for asking that. 
So we have chosen for the the carding cloths that we have here in the studio are all 7272. So the what Jan is asking is how many teeth per inch are on these carding cloths here. We've chosen 72 because it's the most versatile. You can use it for fine or medium cloth fibers. You can also get these for very fine or what they call coarse fibers. Now that means you can get it down to a 54 TPI. Some people like to also use the 54 TPI for fine fibers because it releases the fiber so readily. If you're going for really smooth art baths, like really smooth, well then go for a 72 or finer. But if you're looking for maybe things a little more chunky and funky, then go to 72 or more coarse. And you'll see on our site that you can choose that, um, the TPI. I'm using 72 on both drums throughout the house. And I, I like it. I like the bats that they make. They make them smooth enough, um, yeah, for us, for our use. So Vicki says, I have some of my own wool. Should I cart it or run it through the carter as is? Vicki, what type of wool do you have? So if you have locks or wool that's in the fleece, you definitely wanna break it up before you feed, in, feed it into the tray. Um, you can also use your flick carter or like a teasing cloth or something to break those up a little bit, but you wanna break up fibers before you feed them in. Otherwise, this little drum just takes them up and then wants to clump them onto this big drum and you'll see you'll have like this big little mass right there that you wanna brush down. So break your fibers up a little bit before they go in. Um, what else can I tell you? Do the teeth get damaged? Rose, you know, ideally no, because you want to be very gentle, you know, while you're working with it. But one may get like bent out of place and you might be able to just to bend it back. But they're really strong. They're really strong teeth. You just don't want to bang hard things into them. That's why the, the picks, the picks are so tiny. Um, you know, when you're picking fiber out, either you use this tiny thing or we have what we call the fiber fork. <laughs> so... If I have to pick things out, I have this dedicated fiber fork, which has been here for many years, and we'll just pick little things out, but you don't want to bang hard things into those teeth. Okay, great. So more questions. Is the bat length determined? Yes. Cindy asks, is the bat length determined by the diameter of the drum? Yes, it is. And I'll show you that also here on this uh, other drum carter that we have queued up and ready to uh, finish up a little art bat. So thank you for asking. Denise says, can you wet felt with the bat uh, just the way it is after it comes off the carter? Yes. So these, these bats that I made, like this really fun bat right here, I could lay this right on top of pre-felt. I could even lay it right on top of silk fabric and felt it just like it is. So when you have something like silk fabric, you already have a warp then a weft, like silk chiffon or silk gauze. You already have a warp then a weft, and then you could felt these fibers right on top. But you might want to test it, the density of your art bats, and test it for yourself. But you could also lay this right on top of pre-felt or on top of a layer of two. I would use two other layers underneath. Um, so that you have a nice foundation. But yes, you could wet felt with this just as they are. So fun. Um, what else? Would you lay this over? So we answered that. Okay, great. Is the brush you're using the same as a carding brush? Um, Grace, not necessarily. So um, these are, I think these are, these burnishing brushes are teeth up. Now you can also get teeth down, so it really is just going to impact the direction that you lay it on. So if your teeth were going the opposite way, then you could hold the brush this way, as opposed to this way. And that's really what happens. These teeth have like an angle to them, so, but these are also finer. The, the teeth on the burnishing brushes are finer than the ones on the drums and on a carding brush, they tend to be more like this, more stiff. These are finer and just have a little more give, so they're a little different. Okay, what else can we answer? Are we good? Uh, how many times do you put it through, or do you need, so Pixie Photography asks, how many times do you put the art bat through? That depends on how blended you want it. So if you want to take any of these blends that we already did and you want the fibers more integrated, then you can pass them through again and pass them through again. But if you like the delineation of the fibers as you have them, then you don't have to card them again. You can use them 
just as they are. Felt with them, spin with them, just as they are. Yep. Mm -hmm. Linda says, these drum carters are so great for blending colors to use in needle felting animal fur. Oh, that's true. Yes, and I, so I'm focusing on, jo I was talking to Jordan about that before the show and said, some people are just going to want to use these to make like just critter colors. And that's for sure, because when you're using hand cards like these, which we carry large and small, then you can only make what's as big as this bed. So sometimes you're, you know, you just need to make something small, but if you want to make something bigger, well then you can use the drum carter. We also carry Ashford drum carters and those are smaller and they make smaller bats. Um, those are made in New Zealand and they've been on back order throughout the last couple of years. So we wanted to bring you something that is tried and tested by us and loved by us. And um, we're very grateful to the folks at Fancy Kitty, Yvonne and Fred, for partnering with us so that we could bring these to you. So let me show you um, the kitten wide. The kitten is a, their base level Carter, and I'm working on the wide model. They also have an eight inch model, like the one we have over here in the little Tom. Uh, we chose a wide model for the studio, so it's as wide as my big Tom, but it's manual. And so I have a hand crank over here. Are we, we're gonna turn this around. Mm -hmm. Where am I putting it? Oh, here? On that corner. Okay, let me show them the, the handle first, just so y'all can see. This is the, oh, I could put it over there, but I'll be far away. Okay. Bear with me, y'all. This is the handle on the kitten. Um, this is the handle on the kitten manual. And well, as you can see, it's kind of hitting the table here. So what we want to do is put it on the end of the table. Now, if you get the little Tom manual, the base is larger and you can card even in the middle of the table. But on the kitten, it's a, it's a shorter base and so you want to card on the end of the table. So Jordan's gonna direct me here and tell me where am I to go. Am I just going to the middle? Sure. Okay. That's fine. Okay. all Christmassy here so I have loaded this bat already with white fibers and I'll show you on the overhead uh, in just here in a second so you can see what it's like to work on the wide and how wide this is sorry for the clanking um, this is the kitten wide it's got a nice wide feed tray and then you can get it so right eight inches this is 17 inches so it's a little wider than double so we're going to be feeding in right to here and i guess you'll only there you go you'll be able to kind of see what's happening a little bit should i come up here you're no you're good okay now i've loaded this with white uh, merino top and a couple of little stripes uh, this is the merino top we're using white um, Bordeaux and red and then I have some viscose in white and red and then we have some Angelina in white and silver and also some white neps so the hand process is every bit as satisfying <laughs> as the electric it's just that you pause and feed your fibers on as you turn And we'll give you two views here in a second, y'all, but we'll just you can kind of see from the back a little bit. Now, if we're feeding fibers into the tray here, which you didn't get to see before, this is, um, let me just take a little piece. We open the fibers up. I'll just put a, feed a small piece. This is kind of how we've been doing it, spreading them out. This little liquor in right here picks them up and just feeds them right onto the drum. When I have fiber, some people just let this liquor in fill up, but sometimes when I get towards the end of a bat is I just kind of pick them off and then I'll put them on the drum directly. I don't want to waste any of the fibers, so I'll just clean it off a little bit and take them with me as we go. And we can add some of our sparkly Angelina. Let me give it a few more 
our stripes. Yes. And we can stripe it with the merino top or the luster fibers. I'm feeling very peppermint. Mm -hmm. Candy cane bats, yeah, Jessica says. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's add some dark in there. Now, if you have one of these and you do fiber, you do craft fairs, you might find that you can um, also sell some art bats to people who come by and, and see your work because they're going to fall in love with them. I have some red, where do I go? I have some red Angelina here we're going to put in. Oh, there we go. Jordan's got us a nice view. Okay, so let's put in some. I'm even going to put some silver in this one, I think. This is silver, a little bit of silver Angelina as well. Sometimes you just need a little bit of glitz. Karen asks what you prefer to add it on top or under the liquor. That's a great question. Okay, Karen, so I'm forgetting where we are because we filmed some making of an art bats already. So when it comes to the luster fibers, the reason I feed them right on top is for the same reason that I was showing you down here on the lower, uh, on the liquor in. Down here, if I feed it here, then they're going to kind of get stuck here. So I don't want to waste any of those really fine fibers, or especially my neps will get stuck in here, and later I'm just going to be picking them out. <laughs> so instead of doing that, I like to feed those things right on top here. And let's add a few neps. The neps are kind of interesting things because I got to find my place. The neps are kind of interesting things because they're already clumped together. So I do like to separate them a little bit before I put them on. If it's uncomfortable in your hand, you can also use the brush a little bit. But when you're manual like this, you can go very slow and just paint them in a few places and let this brush tack them all down for you. And for the neps and stuff, I would only put the neps on top. Like I said, if you're a spinner, then you can put the, if you're spinning art yarns, then you can put these things throughout. So this is a good example. See how these guys already um, got stuck down here in the liquor in? And it's no big deal. You'll just take them out and put them up. But um, it's just that they all didn't stick. So then we can use our little burnishing brush as well and just pack everything down. Very, very satisfying to make uh, these art bats on these carters and um, just create a bit of deliciousness. So like this bat that we've just made, I made one. Did I share that one? Okay. Oh, all right. I made one before you came. So like a good magic cooking show. This one doesn't have quite as much red in it, but it's much loftier. This is a, um, a two ounce bat and I could easily, I feel like, have doubled the weight that I put on this. So I find that the, the fine fibers, you really can put a lot on there. You just want to be mindful and not overpack it or else it starts to pill. It'll start to pill up on the, the fine fibers will start to pill if you just pack too much on there. But how fun is that? Like so, so sweet, so pretty. Make a great little fairy dress. Uh, if you're doing like Waldorf style or if you're wet felting, they're just so, so pretty. These drum carters are such a blast. So we have the drum carters here and you can also um, hand card these fine fibers, uh, but you can also use something like um, the blending palette, which I don't think we have time to demonstrate. The blending palette um, takes a little more time to, to do and it's a little bit different, but this gives you an idea here. This is the Fancy Kitty Fiber Artist Blend Palette. Um, like the others that you've seen us show you in the past, it has a keel on the back and you can adjust it for sitting on the tabletop or you can turn it to use on your lap. You can even angle it so that you can use it just like while you're on your lap or you can use it right here on the table. Now this one is longer than the ones that we've used at uh, by Ashford. Um, it's a little more narrow and it's longer and it's definitely very weighty. It's a very solid 
tool to use. And just how you use a blending palette is you apply by hand the fibers um, wherever you want. So you can run one fiber like all the way down and make stripes or just start in the middle, start somewhere, and you can also make like little chunks and just work your way around. So I won't have time, I don't think, to make a bat, because this really does take a lot of time to apply, but that's how you use a fiber blending board, as they're called, or a fiber artist blending palette. We will do a separate video on using the blending palette. It's quiet. <laughs> it's quiet. It's uh, very um, meditative, and you just get to paint and design your piece while you work by blending them right on the palette. You just, yeah. Cool. I made a big mess on the table already. <laughs> okay, so what other questions or thoughts do we have there, Jordan? Let's oh. see, somebody asked if you would add wool on top of Angelina to tack it down or if that's not needed. Oh, that's a good question. So yeah, I, I probably mentioned that in just quickly in passing is sometimes when I add the Angelinas, sometimes I might add a little bit of stuff on top. It depends on how much of a, a clump there is. But the Angelina, um, if it gets too clumpy, tends to really sit on top and sometimes just wants to fall off. So you can always just create a little ghost web of fiber over the top uh, to help anchor your Angelina down or blend it in. If you want it really blended in, then you can blend that Angelina in throughout, and then you could also pass the bat back through the drum carter again. But just as we did with the initial um, entering of the fiber into the liquor in, you need to break it up. Like you can't just put this on the feed tray and feed it back through, it's way too thick. So you would basically separate it into pieces, break it up and blend it through again. So carding multiple passes uh, is absolutely acceptable and can give you some really beautiful, beautiful blends. You're gonna have less distinctions, but absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous blends. And we'll do that together separately also another time. Can you use a silk hanky, Karen asked. So Karen, I didn't bring any silk hankies in here with me today I don't think but a silk hanky for those of you who don't know is basically a silk cocoon that has been degummed and stretched into a square and it's usually a bunch you know you usually get a bunch of layers at once if you want to include silk hankies um, then I would cut them into small pieces so that you get that little bit of texture and sheen and uh, cluster but you don't try and get these big webby things because they're they really want to all stick together they're very stretchy and um yeah i would cut them into little bits more like sari silk waste so that you have little bits that you can put into your fiber salad art bat yes Devin okay. says this would be a fun background for a christmas picture or a stocking oh yeah well, that sounds great yeah just carting all of this back for a picture or yeah that sounds really nice a stocking a little angel's dress or something like that uh chloe says do you carry the blending palettes so yes i think we answered that that seems the most realistic that's what's really nice about these is you can um this is the blending palette they have smaller ones so this is the big one um and the pricing you know compared compared is really good so this is the large one and you can get smaller ones as well so definitely something something to consider now um, what other what other questions or thoughts do you have Jordan a few people are asking how you would get the fiber off or the bat off of the palette okay so I won't do it because I haven't I haven't loaded it up enough because they'll all help take each other off but just a quick look on the overhead what we would do on the blending palette is I like to let the fibers stick off the bed uh, just a little bit and I don't know where my short oh. You can use the blending brush that you have here and then these little dowels will come with it and they have these little pokey ends. And what we do is we'd get up under there and then we would roll it off or you could also brush and sort of roll it off like I did on the drum carter. But I like to let them, you need to fill it up first so that they all help take off the fibers above them, right? And then just let it stand off a little bit and you'll use these dowels and or this brush to help you lift it up off. That would be your tools. Yeah, so we're gonna go this way when, you, when we take it off from the bottom up. Just like the drum carters, you go the opposite um, direction. Yeah. 
Cool. What else here? Reading your questions. Okay. So um, now some of you have drum carters out there. I know you do and you've uh, been carting them with us. So maybe you'll share some of your blends in the, in the group, the Living Felt Friends on Facebook. And for those of you who are interested in um, a blending box, maybe for going into next year, we're taking, um, taking interest now. We have an interest list on our website for blending boxes of fine fibers to start. So it would be a collection like we have here of maybe colored themes that would be a blending box of fine fibers, luster fibers, and other goodies. That would be a subscription box. And we'll also look at having the ability to do one off. So Jordan put that up for us, that the, that's the Felting Fairies blend box. We have a link in the description and also on the landing page or the shopping page for today's show. We fill that up with the carding tools that we have available, um, as well as lots of fibers you could consider for your blends. And if that's something you're interested in, definitely jump on the email list. Even if you're already on our regular email list, that will just be for people who are interested in a blend box that would be curated collection um, that you could get in the mail each month. So I know some of you have asked us for that. Um, Anything else that we want to address for today's show, Jordan? I think we've just got everybody so excited about carding some of their own bats and coming up with color combinations in the chat. They are very excited. Very nice, very nice. Well, lots of fun you can have with them. We wanted to introduce these to y'all. We're going to have more videos on uh, how to use the drum carter and how to make some, um, just some of the features and tips. We did an unboxing for the folks over at uh, Fancy Kitty, and I just want you to know that these are really fantastic, well-made, made in the USA carding tools. We love using them here in the studio, and we hope that if you try them, you'll let us know how they're going for you also. So we're available for y'all here. This is our last show until after Thanksgiving. We just wish all of our US friends a very happy Thanksgiving and a happy beginning to the holiday season for everyone. Hey, uh, just a couple of quick things. I wanted, I wanted to share with you, some of y'all have already seen them. Maybe you've already started getting them. You're going to start receiving, those you orders, these little packages of, of our fibers. We um, send out a lot, a lot, a lot of packaged fibers and we are doing our best to transition as many pieces of parts as possible into more environmentally friendly packaging. So these new packages are replacing our plastic bags, which were originally this size. They're 100% recyclable, the cardboard's recyclable, and this is the same plastic as is used for drink bottles. So these are 100% recyclable. If you've gotten them, yay, just wanted you to know that we've switched to them. Um, and you're gonna be seeing as, more, as much as we can of eco-friendly packaging. There was something else I wanted to say. I don't know, but we're gonna draw some names. Jordan's been writing down your names. You've been participating over there. We're gonna give away some of these art bats that we've been making in the studio the last few days to share with you. And thank you, Jordan. Are you coming over? Yeah. Okay, 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 yeah. <laughs> Thanks for being our cameraman, Jordan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Camera woe man. Mm -hmm. um, oh, look, so people are asking questions. Um, Devin says, can you mention the sizes of the drum carters you'll have now? I don't want to compare them with the Ashford except to say that, okay, so the Fancy Kitty ones make wider and longer art bats, the base models do. The Ashford has a 12 inch, mm -hmm. but these diameters uh, seem to be longer. So um, there's a variety of drum carters on the site now, and you might want to see which ones are available. But these fancy kitty ones come in an eight inch wide or a 17 inch wide drum. Uh, but the, like the Tom drum carters make a 38 inch bat, where these make a 22 inch bat. And what did we say the Ashford's made? was smaller. Smaller. It was smaller. <laughs> the, the teeth bed aren't quite eight inches wide and the, um, the length is shorter. So I don't have that number in the top of my head. Kim says, how heavy, how heavy are they? I'll tell you that they're, they're pretty dense. I mean, they, they weigh enough that you don't have to 
hand crank down the, the manual. The manual comes with a table clamp, but you don't have to clamp it down. So it's weighty enough that you don't have to, but I can also pick them up and carry them, except for the big Tom. He's big and heavy, so yeah, don't try said, and carry him. They said the kittens are about 10 pounds, and it works up to about 50 pounds as their heaviest. Yeah, that's big Tom. He's heavy. You don't want to you don't want to drag him around <laughs> to the kitchen table. So, all right, y'all. Thank you for hanging out with us today. We are going to give away some art baths, and I have Linda Wanzer. And I have Laura McNelly. That's it. Thanks y'all so much for playing with us. We hope to see you next time and we hope to see you carting up some art bats. <laughs> Thanks y'all. Have a good holiday. Bye. Bye.